Welcome back. This time a quick tutorial or tip about the axis angle node and how useful it is for managing rotations. I see a lot of people uh, struggling with rotations in Protoflux because they're trying to, you know, deal with the mysterious Quinarian, which is very powerful, but very confusing. Um, I almost exclusively use axis angle to avoid that problem. Uh, so I'm going to show you how to use it today. Uh, so in the world here, I've got a sphere that uh, has an arrow coming out of it just to show rotation. And I've also enabled the rotation gizmos from the developer tip here. So you can see those um, axes of rotation uh, around there. So got um, Y for uh, green, uh, Z is blue, and X is red. So first of all, where to find that note? So you can go ahead and go to math and then uh, rotation and then axis angle. We'll need the float. Uh, variant for all nodes today. So I'm spawning this in and you'll see that there are two inputs. The first one is the axis that you'd like to um, do a rotation around and then the uh, second one is the angle or magnitude that you'd like to do that rotation by. So let's say that we wanted to um, represent a uh, y rotation by 90 degrees. What we can do here is pull out axis uh, type 1 into the y column of the float 3, a bit like positional values, and then here we can type in 90 and then this will create um, magically for you without you need to do any maths, a quaternion with the value of a 90 degree rotation on the y axis. So if we go ahead and jump over here to the inspector and we grab rotation, come over here and we drive it, you'll see that this can go straight in, no need for Euler angles or anything like that, it just goes straight in and you'll see that that rotation has been applied. Let's say we want to swing it the other way around, we can do negative 90 and it will swing to the left rather than the right, it supports negative values. Now this isn't that powerful, but it is when you start combining it with other nodes. So for example here, I'm going to go ahead and uh, head down to the time uh, folder. Whoops, I went too uh, deep. Time, and then we're looking for world time float, also known as T. Um, and then we're also going to go to um, operators. Actually, no, we can just plug T straight in for now. We plug T straight in you'll see that we get a uh, rotation. Now it's not very fast, so we can go ahead and speed that up by uh, multiplying it. So we can do uh, multiply, and then we're looking to uh, multiply floats. So val mol float. So we can put in T and we can say, hey, 90 here, and then plug this into angle. And now you see it's going a lot faster. We can also make that very fast if we make that a very large number. If you're still not convinced that this is a really easy node to uh, do things with, I'm going to show you some more um, things. For that, we're going to need a static value. So I'm going to just plug that back in again. What if we wanted to do a 90 degree rotation, sorry, negative 90 degree rotation on the Y, but also a rotation on another axis? All we need to do there is remember that quaternions are weird. And that to make them work, you um, if, you, if you want to add them together, you multiply. Um, I have sort of accepted that that is the case, um, but uh, it's just multiply. <laughs> so if we get a value multiply with a quaternion data type or float Q, we can plug in the first one here, and then the second rotation we can put in here. And to do that, we're just going to go ahead and clone the axis angle, put that in, do the... Uh, other axis that we want. So let's say we wanted a 45 degree rotation on the um, Z. We can do that. And then we just connect the output here to uh, at drive, which I appear to have lost for some reason. Okay, I'll just grab it again. Uh, rotation drive. Now we've got a 45 degree rotation on the um, Z and a negative 90 rotation on the um, on the Y. I'm trying to tidy up here. I'm doing this in desktop mode because I'm, I'm busy with some other things right now. Uh, so that's great and all um, because you can now do that. Uh, this is also immune to gimbal lock because you're composing each axis separately and then multiplying them together. Uh, we could also do things like mix and match. So if I go put this T value back in again, you can see it's spinning on that Y axis, but it's also maintaining that Z rotation. Of course, if we wanted to be special, we could also put, put this in and now it's going to do two axes. If I put in a third um, axis angle with the last axis specified, it would also do um, that as well. 
There's one final trick with axis angle that I'd like to show you, and for that it'll be best if we keep that rotating. I am going to deselect all, and then it, uh, it's a little bit better to look at. And that is the opposite interaction that you can do. So if we go all the way back to uh, math, rotation, and we do two axis angle and then two axis angle float, you can plug um, an, ac uh, an angle back into this node here and you get the axis and the angle out. Of course, this is better with a static rotation. So let's go ahead and hook that back up. So we've got negative 90 and positive 45, which goes there. Well, I missed. And there you go, there's the axis angle. Uh, so if you can calculate this value here, which is a bit too advanced for this, uh, this tutorial, but if you can calculate this axis value um, automatically, then you don't need multiple axis angles, but I'd say keep it simple. Put ones in here, multiply them together, and you get complex rotations very easily. That's all for this video. I'll speak to you soon.